Hi there, welcome to Minecraft Education Edition. So this guide is going to be just a, a kind of getting started with it um, for the first time. We're going to focus on uh, creative mode in particular today and we'll explain what that means in a little bit. But we're just going to go through some of the features, navigating around and kind of I guess your first play. So. The very first thing to do is going to be to sign in with uh, a Microsoft account that includes Minecraft Education Editions. So, okay, and once you arrive here, um, there is a few different bits on here. There is some stuff in the settings that you might want to play with, but we're not going to do too much with that today. You can uh, work on your skin here, so if you want to change your skin to look a little different, then you can do that just here too. Um, but we're going to concern ourselves with play today. Okay, so what you will see here, a few different things. So the library here contains basically pre-built worlds and tutorials. And there's some really interesting stuff in that, but we're not going to focus on that one today. Um, if you are joining a world that already exists, then obviously this is going to be your place to start. So if you're in a class and there's a Minecraft world running, then this is where you would want to click and there will simply be a four um, picture code that will be given to you and um, obviously you tap that in and then it would just join but um, if you're working on your own worlds obviously things you've been working on before will appear in here but uh, I'm going to create a new world and this is where we see the difference between survival and creative mode so uh, they are different in here and to kind of understand the difference between the two. Um, so in survival mode you have a finite set of resources, you have to mine uh, things that you need, you have to craft different tools and different things that you might want. Um, so survival kind of suits better in, in an educational setting, might suit better if you were uh, trying to do that kind of um, setting up a I guess a, a civilization or, or something from the beginning with nothing so having to actually collect all those things and, and simulating that. Um, what we use more commonly is creative mode so the difference in creative mode is that you have unlimited resources so um, you can just get whatever blocks you want at any time um, and any different resources that you need. Um, up at the top here is where you would give your world a name so whatever your class may be perhaps if we were doing this from a, a teacher's perspective if you were setting this up and then there's a few other settings in here um, again as a teacher that you might want to set um, things like turning on coordinates is really useful to find out where you are do you want fire to be able to spread if you think that's going to be an issue you can turn it off do you want TNT? So these are explosive boxes. Do you want them? They, they do a lot of damage, so you might want to turn that off. Um, other things of any use here. So mobs are um, any characters that are kind of non-players, so uh, animals, monsters, all sorts of things like that. Um, other things that are important here, we'll probably leave those ones, but under classroom there's a few more. So allowing commands is, is very useful. Um, you'll be able to in more advanced ways be able to do things to uh, to organize your world a little bit better. Code Builder, um, again whether you leave it on or off probably won't matter unless you are getting the students into doing coding with Minecraft, uh, but I'll leave it on for now. Is it always daytime? Sure, perfect weather for now so we can see what we're doing otherwise it will rain and snow and it'll get to night time and, and etc, but uh, I'll leave those on. Allow mobs, so do you want to allow animals and things like that? The only reason I would generally turn this off is, is if you end up with too many of them, they can slow the game down if people get silly with them, but uh, I think that's just asking the students. Um, allow destructive items, I'll turn that off. Player versus player damage, so they can't fight with each other and, and, and hurt each other. So we'll turn that off, and I think that will do. So I'm going to click play.
Okay, so here we are. We can see we're by the sea. So the world will be randomly generated. Um, so you're never going to appear in the, in the same world twice if you're making a new world, obviously. Um, but we can see from this one a few things around. We can wander down onto the beach and see we see some stuff over there and some other things. Now, you could walk around on foot. That's fine. It's going to take you a while to get places. If you were in survival mode, you would only be able to walk around on foot. But in creative mode, we, um, we have some other ways of getting around which are useful. So moving itself, sorry, I'm jumping ahead of myself. Moving itself is, uh, again, it's going to depend what kind of device you are on. If you're on an iPad or a touchscreen device, then it can entirely be controlled with the touchscreen. Um, I'm going to focus on the keyboard and either mouse or touchpad controls here because that's probably going to be more common. Um, and I'm moving, looking around with the mouse like this, so obviously I can move the mouse and look in different directions. I'm moving around with the W, A, S and D keys on the keyboard. So W obviously go forward, S to go backwards and then we can step sideways with A and D, and then obviously turn using the mouse. So it takes a little getting used to, but this is the, the general control scheme for a lot of um, first-person games like this. So if you play other first-person games, then uh, moving around won't be a challenge. So obviously familiarizing yourself with that first and just walking around is, is gonna be really important. But uh, when you're comfortable with that and you feel you can move around, you can try jumping, which is uh, going to be the space bar. So we can jump on stuff and over things. Or if we use the space bar again and we tap it twice, we're now flying. So although it looks like we're still close to the ground, if we press the space bar now after we've double tapped it, we will fly upwards. If we want to come back down, we can hold the shift key to come back down again. So space to go up, shift to come down. And if you double tap space again, you will stop flying and fall to the ground. Okay, so double tap again, up we go. And we can see a little more now. So we can see there's a, a little village here. These are often generated within the worlds um, they are just little buildings with some villagers wandering around inside them. Just like this here, we can see this little guy here. And we can also see, obviously, we've got a sort of bay here now, I think. And you can see a, a mountainous area over there as well. So we can press forward now. We are flying and obviously fly through the air. You can move faster by double tapping W and holding it down. So if I double tap W and then keep it held down to move forwards, I'll actually fly faster to move between different places. So there's an interesting flat little area here. Let's go down. Okay, so we can obviously walk around this area now. So if I wanted to start building something or digging, uh, let's have a look at that now. So you can see along the bottom of the screen, you've got um, well, you've got nine little blocks here, nine squares where you can put some things. So to bring up uh, your inventory or to bring up the, the list of resources, you press E on the keyboard and then that's gonna bring up all sorts of different stuff. So if you're looking for something in particular, you can just search for it if you can't find where it is. But to go through, these are generally your building materials. They're going to be kept under the first one. These ones are mostly armor, but not all. There's some food pieces and some other stuff, potions and things are in here. So weapons and armor and tools. Um, this one are more specialist items, things like lanterns and torches, uh, buckets of various things. There's some education only things here like chalkboards which allow you to write uh, larger bits of text and stick them up on surfaces which are really useful. We'll have a look at one of those in a bit. Um, lots of other resources that you might want to use down here. Things like rails and minecarts if you're looking to build a track, boats, uh, TNT which we mentioned earlier but that won't do a lot at the moment. Um, there's a couple of, uh, another couple of education specific ones here. So here we've got portfolio, camera, and book and quill. 
And again, we'll talk about those ones later and what we can do with those. But I'm just going to grab a very basic construction material. I'm just going to grab some uh, oak wood planks and stick them in here. I'm also going to grab uh, an oak fence and let's find the steps. Where's the steps? There they are. Let's grab some oak wood steps as well. We'll put those in there and maybe some glass. Okay, so I've got a few things now down in the bottom and I can cycle through these by pressing the number buttons. So one, two, three, four, and then five, so they're all empty. Okay, so I can go to the first one. I've got these wooden planks. So if I wanted to place a block down, then I use the right mouse button. So if you're using a touchpad, that's going to be clicking twice um, on the, uh, sorry, that's going to be two finger click on the touchpad. I, I find this a lot easier on a mouse. It's just the right button. Um, but we can then start to lay these out. If we wanted to build a little something. Oops. Ah. And then if you've got things you don't need, you press the left mouse button to destroy them. And that will also obviously dig if you're looking to dig down as well, but we're not for now. So left mouse button to destroy things and the right mouse button to lay them down. So let's, uh, let's fill this in a little bit. A fox wandered into it. Start my next layer and I'm going to leave a door space here. Okay, now for the next block, I'm going to put some window spaces in here as well, going around. on this side. Okay. Now we get one higher. Oops. So structure starting to take shape here. I'm just going to put some steps. And steps will be different ways up depending on where you put them. So if you click towards the top of the block you're attaching them to, they'll be that way up. Which is not what I want. So I'll aim towards the bottom of that block. And then they'll be this way around. Grab my glass. Got a goat on top now. Hello. Okay. So starting to take shape, and I think what we'll do, we'll add another window here. Mm, I got space for one here, maybe. There we go. It's a bit lopsided, my house. Okay. So. At the beginnings of that inside here, I'm just going to fly up and just start to think about the roof. So we could just do a really basic flat roof like this. If you wanted to use the steps, you could build a fancier roof on top of it. I'm just hitting a very basic one at the moment here. Um, we could then just put a... Oops, there's steps. Sorry, just a little fence maybe around the side. Okay, 
So a really, really basic house here now. Um, we could add some other things then inside if we wished. So we could add, uh, let's add a bed, let's add some bookshelves. Um, some of these other things are not ever so useful in creative mode. They will be far more useful in uh, survival mode. Some things that you might need like um, things like crafting tables and other stuff like that. Um, but we'll put some lanterns in here, light it up a little bit. Obviously we've said it's always daytime at the moment, but uh, if it was not, then these would be useful. Okay. There we are. Let's place a bed down here. A couple of bookshelves. Lovely. Okay, so we've built a, a really basic structure there. Um, obviously, as I said, you can uh, dig as well as um, as well as build. So we'll start digging into this hillside. Now you'll find it will get a little dark in here soon, so I'm going to grab a torch and just strategically place some of those along the way. Obviously, again, if you're in survival mode, this is a lot harder to dig and you would need tools to be able to dig. Um, in creative mode, I just hit it with my torch. It doesn't matter. But we start to very easily carve out spaces and you'll find all sorts of interesting underground places along your way. I've just found my way outside, out the other side of the hill there. Um, and dug a tunnel now that goes through the hillside and um, but but yeah so uh, other things you might need to know so obviously this is this is your basic moving around stuff um, if you wanted to bring somebody else into this world so say again this is from a teacher's perspective really if you wanted to be able to host this world so other people can join you can do this uh, by pressing escape and then going up here and you've got start hosting. When you choose start hosting, it says you're okay for this, you click confirm and it's going to give you that code. And this is what we mentioned right at the start where you can join a world. So this is the code you would give to students if you're a teacher. Students, you don't need to worry about this one unless you're making a world obviously uh, with other people around. Uh, then you can do that here and then other people can join. Um, as long as they're on your same um, email domain. So if your login, the last bit of your email address is the same as the students, then you can all work together. So, yep, yeah, we can get that there. I can stop hosting as well at any time if I want to uh, kick all the people out that are in there. So that works. A couple of education specific things here then. So um, we've got uh, chalkboards here, so they come in three different sizes. Let's uh, bring up all three here so you can see. So we've got the, I've got them in the wrong order here. So a slate is the smallest. And if you leave them locked, then only you can write on them, the person that created it, and destroy them. Nobody else can. Uh, if you leave it unlocked, then other people will be able to write on them as well. So if you wanted a, a general notice board and other people to write on it, obviously unlock it. Uh, so that's the size of a slate. The poster is the next one, and that one is this big. Okay, so that's the size of a poster. And a board, um, depending on where you put the bottom corner, Oops, you idiot. There we go. A board is a lot bigger. Okay, uh, so these are specific to education edition um, that you can add these in, but they're really useful. Obviously an unlocked one means that other people can contribute towards that, which is a great way of leaving notices or communicating on a world where you maybe are, uh, some people are accessing it sort of asymmetrically at different times of the day. Um, so those are some education features. Also is the camera, 
the portfolio and the book and quill. So let's have a look at these three now. So they all work together. You'd really need to start with the camera. And what we can do with the camera is that we can just press the right mouse button, take a photo, take a photo of my house, take a photo of my boards, take a photo of the beautiful view. There we go. Uh, so we can do it that way. You can also um, use it on a tripod. So if we put it down with the, uh, there we go, lay it down in front of you like that with the right mouse button. So right mouse button facing up, take a photo. Right mouse button facing down at the ground in front of you a bit will set it up on the tripod. And then what you can do is you can click on it and now it's going to follow you on a timer and then there we go. It'll take your photo and then it will disappear. So if you want to get a photo of you in front of your building like this, press the right mouse button to click it, stand back, Ah, falling down a hole. There we go, me in front of my house. Okay, so that's the camera and that ties into the portfolio. So you go portfolio and right click, you'll see it contains all of my photos and I can add a caption to them. Me in front of my house. Okay, uh, and you can actually export the portfolio and what that will do is it'll download a PDF of all of your photos. So kind of unedited, you can obviously remove photos you don't want, but if you just wanted a series of photos and captions, this is it. Um, you can download individual photos if you want. So if you're looking at putting a photo on Seesaw or somewhere else from it, uh, then you can obviously download an individual photo like that too, um, or export the whole thing as a PDF. The book and quill is a little different. So what that allows you to do is to take uh, pictures from your portfolio, so if we go add, it allows you to choose from your portfolio. So where's that nice photo? There it is. And then it also allows you to put writing onto pages as well. This is a photo I took just after I finished building my house. And you can keep adding pages to this and add photos or more text, uh, bigger amounts of text on here if you want. Um, obviously you can delete pages, move between them, etc. Um, so what's good about this one as well is that you can download the whole book again as a PDF and it's really useful to hand in. So we've handed these in often on things like Google Classroom um, after a student's really described what they've done and they've, they've gone through and they've created a nice book of their, their creations. What you do is you sign it first and then when you sign it, you can't edit it anymore. So they need to be aware once it's signed, it's done. So book title, my awesome book. Um, so when I sit, hit sign and close, that is it. I can't edit it again. So sign and close. You'll now see it's flashing. So now if we press the right button to access it again, you've got the option to view it or export it, which will save a PDF onto your computer um, of your book, which is really cool. So. Those are some education specific features as well. Um, but yeah, I mean, you will learn from others generally. The, the, the students in every class are gonna be uh, extremely good at this. There's uh, a wealth of knowledge, a wealth of knowledge um, amongst all the students in the classes. So highly recommend if there's something you're not sure, just, just ask someone. Uh, I still do it often now with my students and often say, how did you do that? Um, like today I learned that you can actually put down a map that's a live map of an area. They were building a little town and they'd got a map and it was a map of their town just sitting there on the wall as you came up to the town. And they said to me, yeah, you can just, um, you can just create a live map, which I thought was really cool. But yeah, so loads of things that you can, uh, that you can learn to do. Um, and obviously flying around, exploring, visiting different places uh, and just trying stuff out is really how you're gonna learn with this, trying out different blocks and different tools and seeing what you can do with them. So hopefully that just gives you a, a real basic overview of kind of getting around in Minecraft Education Edition in creative mode. Obviously we're not doing survival mode at the moment, but, uh, but yeah, hope that's helpful.